This is your brain. All right, well, it's not your brain, but it's a healthy brain. And this is your brain on hysteria. Are you scared? Okay, that's not your brain on hysteria. That's someone's brain on drugs. But many times hysteria can be like a drug, and that can be very scary. I mean, look at some of the movies we all love so much. 28 Days Later, I Am Legend, The Day After Tomorrow. Heck, even The Avengers has that desperate end of the world theme. And I know that's just the movies. But what happens in real life when people use fear to create new laws and policies? Oftentimes it can do more harm than good. Sometimes it can even be deadly. Green scare tactics threaten human progress. It all begins with Rachel Carson and the launch of her book in 1962, Silent Spring. In the book, she tries to raise concerns about the use of pesticides in the environment and chemicals in general. At the time, there was not a really robust system of licensing environmental chemicals to make sure that they were safe to use in the environment. So some of the claims in her book were well-founded. We really shouldn't be using chemicals in the environment without knowing what their consequences are. Unfortunately, rather than providing a science-based, fact-based approach, she focused on hyping the risks, scaring the public, and eventually changed public policy, and not for the better. Consider the pesticide DDT. For Carson, it was public enemy number one. She ignored the fact that DDT was used to save millions of people by controlling mosquitoes. Mosquitoes that carry malaria and were killing millions of people. DDT was used in the United States to eradicate malaria completely. Around the world and developing nations, it had brought numbers down from the hundreds of thousands to the double digits. We were winning the war. With the use of DDT in Venezuela, cases of malaria had dropped from more than 8 million in 1943 to 800 in 1958. In India, cases had dropped from more than 10 million in 1935 to under 300,000 in 1969. In Italy, cases had dropped from more than 400,000 in 1945 to only 37 in 1968. So in the United States, we banned the use of DDT. But some people thought that the use of DDT was just inherently bad, that it was a danger to human health, and it really wasn't. It was not shown to produce any adverse human health effects yet we banned it anyway. The U.S. put some pressure on developing countries to eliminate their use of DDT also. The cases of malaria went up again. So you can only imagine how many people were harmed by the DDT ban. We have no solid research showing that DDT caused any public health problems whatsoever, not cancer, not acute effects. It was very benign to humans. In fact, in the most robust study, participants had no higher cancer rate, even when they were fed three times the daily rate of DDT exposure than the typical American would get. The full body of evidence suggests that DDT is very safe. Luckily, in 2006, the World Health Organization called on developing countries to begin indoor spraying of DDT to fight malaria. It is now also approved by the Environmental Defense Fund, the Sierra Club, and the Endangered Wildlife Trust. So, this is the perfect example of how fear and hysteria can put bad policies into place that do more harm than good. But what about now? I mean, we like to think we're too smart for that kind of thing now, right? Wrong. Demands for higher fuel economy standards for cars uh, have been with us since the early 1970s. They were first driven by a des political desire to make the U.S. less dependent on foreign oil. The push now to make cars ever more fuel efficient, to squeeze out even more miles per gallon, comes really from a desire to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. The new car fuel economy program is nicknamed CAFE, short for Corporate Average Fuel Economy. The CAFE standards are being pushed way beyond their original limit, and we really have to stop and ask just what is the human cost? If you require cars to get more miles per gallon, you're essentially downsizing them. Smaller, lighter cars simply are less crashworthy than similarly designed large cars. That's a very fundamental fact of physics. Larger cars have more space in which a car occupant can ride down a crash. They have more structure that can absorb the energy of a collision. They're safer. 
These advocates for higher CAFE standards ignore a very inconvenient fact. CAFE kills, and the higher you push CAFE, the more stringent you make it, the more lethal it becomes. Not only are these cars less crashworthy, they'll hold fewer passengers, less cargo, soon they'll not even come with spare tires. And the best part? They're gonna cost a lot more. So we'll be paying more for less car and for less safety. Paying more to save the environment, many of us can get on board with that. But paying more to be less safe? That's just crazy. Most hysterics have some basis in reality, but why do they get blown up to such ridiculous proportions? Look, we love good horror films. They're really exciting. And so are these headlines. They have the ring of plausibility along with the intrigue of a horror film. And that's what we got in the wake of Silent Spring, a plausible response to a possible problem hugely amplified by hysteria. And as a result, reason, fact-based compromise is absent. Alarmism is given more weight than it deserves and should be recognized as the natural tendency for people to entertain the worst, most unlikely outcome. A healthy balance of skepticism can go a long way in assessing whether a real problem exists and what the true cost of the proposed solutions are. Basing your opinions and actions on facts and not hysteria might even save lives.